Hello, welcome to session number 12 and uh, today we uh, start to focus on the last bit uh, we haven't checked on the Alto which is the Ethernet card uh, and which is actually a pre-standard Ethernet this is a 3 megabit per second Ethernet uh, that's where it all started and can this thing Weird stuff on the scope. Oh, you have data? Is that uh, good data, Ken? We don't know. I have no idea what it means. <laughs> so there's, oh wow, there's some activity. We couldn't get anything for the longest time. All right, maybe that's a good omen. So right now, Ken told me all that, I had no idea. We're looking at a FIFO implemented in hardware, where there's a, a head counter and a tail counter, I'm not sure which one of these are, uh, which generate, uh, which increment uh, when the right enable is clocked. And so it counts addresses, and here you can either select the head or the tail address. And here, down here, I'm told this is a little comparator that tells you if the uh, head and tails are colliding. And it's done with a ROM, actually. So it's a uh, 54.c but done all in hardware and uh, we're trying to see if that circuitry is working so so far that that looks good um, it's counting right so it's the address counting up on the FIFO the lower a bit and then the second the third bit so so that's what the, the head pointer head pointer is working? Yeah. Right, so we should do the same with tail. Yeah. I'm I'm glad you reverse engineer that that circuit. So tail counter is not, not doing. doing anything. Ha ha. Is it supposed to be at the same rate? Um, well, they're they're asynchronous. Right, 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 right. But it should move if something was coming out, right? Yeah. So that so that, that matches. But we're seeing nothing going into the shift register. So here, Ken, as an overview of the Ethernet card, can, can you explain, uh, Ken, where, where we are right now? What you're seeing? Okay, th this part over here is the FIFO control. This is the input address counter that gets incremented every time something gets written to the FIFO. We see this changing as data goes in, but we don't see this changing as data comes out. So it's like Roach Motel, data goes into the FIFO, but doesn't Until it comes out. And we see nothing happening on the output shift register or on the Ethernet output. So, so basically the whole taking data out of the FIFO and sending it, that's not happening that's at all. That's broken, okay. So we, we seem to have a little bit more life now. Uh, yeah, there's nothing... There's still no, no output. We're not getting any data but, going into the shift register. Right, but, but now the shift register is going, right? So you had to change the collision signal, right? We had the collision signal wrong. We thought we were indicating no collisions and we wanted but to indicate we, we collisions. See, we, we see the shift register very nicely getting loaded and then the bits and, getting clocked And out. getting loaded with nothing. There's just nothing. Nothing goes in, nothing comes out. Uh, but and the Alto thinks it's sending something, so that's... That's progress. So uh, you, you hear that uh, David Box is trying to come over here. So we'll have the yeah. we'll have the original designer of this thing. Yeah, so <laughs> that might help. Kind of intimidating. <laughs> yes. So for those that don't know, uh, David Boggs is none other than the uh, co-inventor of the multipoint data communication system with collision detection, uh, commonly known as Ethernet today. 
uh, uh, with Bob McCalf, uh, Chuck Thacker, and Butler Lampson, basically the engineers for the Alto. And our second guest of honor is none other than Ron Crane, uh, who left Xerox uh, with uh, Bob Metcalf and co-founded uh, 3Com Corporation uh, and basically made uh, Ethernet a commercial product. And as you know, as they say, the rest is history. It was hugely successful. And uh, this is, of course, now the backbone of the Internet as we know it today. So we are really honored to have both of those guests with us. This is the first yes. Ethernet. So actually we are blessed today. We have kind of the inventors with us. This is David Boggs and he is the maker of the first Ethernet card uh, with Bob Metcalf, right? So co-inventor. Yeah. Co-inventor, right. And uh, this is Ron Crane, and you uh, co-founded uh, Shri Shricom. Three co-founders, right? So, so, so here's here's the transceiver that Ron Crane designed. Right. This is the 3C100. There's the Shricom yes, one. Yes. What two? Can uh, can we stand? Uh, so that's quick. that's the box of Ethernet goodies. Are oh, they all no. transceivers? No, this random stuff really. Uh, mm. This is another transceiver. Who who made that? Is this a deck? I think this may be a deck transceiver. It's much so. Uh, David here has brought us this panoply of you know, early Ethernet equipment, I mean the first Ethernet in the world really. And uh, so this is how it used to work. You had a, a, a large cable here, I'm zooming on your, on your transceiver box, right? So this is an example of some early Ethernet transceiver technology. So um, uh, this, this one was uh, developed by an independent contractor who worked with us named uh, Tat Lam. Uh, this one was designed by 3Com Corporation, founded by Bob Metcalf, and designed by Ron Crane standing next to me. Right there. This is your stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, this, this is the insides of what's in this massive thing, uh, which is the uh, transceiver that was designed by Digital Equipment Corporation. Uh, one of the two early adopters of, of Ethernet. The, this is probably the easiest way to show it. Uh, up in the ceiling, there, uh, strung through this, the hallways between offices, uh, was this half inch, or actually slightly smaller, uh, diameter coax cable, very simple off-the-shelf stuff for people who want to know it's RG8, which is very common. Right, this uh, was the 50 ohm. Um, right, this is the cable. 50 ohm um version of it. Uh, and so uh, you would pop a ceiling tile, uh, locate this cable. Later it was uh, brightly colored to make it easier to, uh, to identify, like this one, hmm. uh, because most of the other cables were black. And then you would clamp this metal block, you unscrew this screw, and uh, oh, it's loose. And it comes right off. So you, you clamp it over the cable, tighten it down, and then you want to basically core through the outer cable and get to that center conductor. So there's a, stand, a number of tools that we've developed we put over them the over years. Here. But this, is the, this is the one that works best. This was actually developed, this whole system of this metal block and this tool was developed by the cable TV industry uh, for wiring apartment buildings or right. something it's like Gerald, that. Gerald Electronics. J-E-R-R-O-L-D, -R -R it's a very famous old name. So you clamp the block on and you screw this thing in and it's basically got a little set of circular saw teeth in it cuts a plug out of the outer insulation and the braid, but it doesn't get into the center conductor. And then you can just sort of shake it out or pick it out with a pencil or something like that. And then you can plug in a transceiver. And this one has a little stinger, stinger at the end, end right? Here. right. And it goes right in there and you screw it on and it will connect to both the outer shield and the center conductor. The pin goes to the center conductor and the middle block is connected to the outer shield. So that picks up both sides, and so in about a couple of minutes, standing on a stepladder with popping a ceiling tile, you can make another connection to uh, to an Ethernet. Right, and and then you are not done to finish your Ethernet ne connection because you need to go from that box right. so then, to so the then card over there, which Ken is furiously trying to debug and uh, and finally get your your Ethernet. 
So here's so coming out of the back of the transceiver, you have a transceiver cable. This is a particularly thick and not very flexible one, uh, and it plugs in there. And the other end of this goes down and plugs into the back of the computer. The back of the alto, which is actually over there. It looks like we finally have life out of our Ethernet card. It's the good karma of having uh, David Boggs around with us. But um, Ken found that uh, there were some resistors missing right in the schematics at the end. So the schematic shows the, the pull-up resistor for the open collector driver but on the board. These two resistors are missing. We're there. So the line just stays at ground. Uh, I added the pull-up resistors to my test board and now it works. So we put them outside. Those, which one? Those guys? Yeah, they're normally the these two. Right. right. And so yeah, so, so, yeah, so it, now it, we get a nice pipe. Right. Yeah. It didn't have a transceiver attached to it. So cool. Yes. Ethernet. Three megabits. That's right out of V. Two point nine four. Yeah. That's about three forty. That's right out of V. So the time, the clock is right. But the, but the key thing is we don't have the the transceiver on the end of the cable, which has the proper pull-up resistors, which would have solved. Uh, Part of the issue. Yeah, well, that, that's what those things do. Yes. Yeah, so right. so have you ever found a program called EDP, Ethernet Debugging Program? That's that's this. Okay, EDP, that's yeah. boy, that's a new version. Yes, of the e e yeah. Ethernet yeah. Diagnostic <laughs> Program. Seventy nine. You were still there. <laughs> I might have done that. <laughs> I, I was going through Graphic cleaning up the graphical interfaces, but I don't remember this one. Really. Well, I actually sort of do now. Oh boy. Yeah, I, I probably did do that. It's the only disc I have, I think. Uh, oh, this is says, from the original. <laughs> it's from my personal Alto, and I think oh. it has my PhD thesis on it, if I had to guess. That uh, would be great. So I would like that. 1984. So you trust us not to destroy your PhD thesis? Matter I hope this isn't the only copy. <laughs> no, no, no. University <laughs> microfilms. Hey, 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 can I just stick it in? You got sill on there. Yeah. What does sill do? Sill is a text that's simple. simple illustrator. It's the thing we drew all of our schematics in. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I thought this had a thesis on it, but I don't see it. Unless it's in the subdirector. Uh, well, which is cool is that we can read the cartridge no problem. Well, I'm just glad to see it still boots. Yeah. 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 Yes. It's just been resting in my closet quietly, and I've been not not been using it. Pull out Bravo. Okay. Is your favorite text editor? Uh, still my, still my one and only love. <laughs> Nothing has even come close. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised no one has written a Unix program that is a Bravo emulator. I suppose there might be some kind of legal entanglements, but at this point, I'm, I don't think anyone will. No, they even gave the source code up, right? It's part of the uh, ah. CHM. Well, it works. <laughs> Try it out. <laughs> I don't have anything to write at the moment. <laughs> but, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't it be funny if you typed in today's date and then the Bravo flips over and says Word version 2.5? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. So you're you fixing the optical mouse? Yes. Solar mice designs. So we we just we, we managed to change our connector on the on our optical mouse to have the original connector 
I plugged it in and here's another Xerox first it's optical mouse yeah, no balls it's just the LEDs I don't know if yeah, you can see them barely lighting up through the camera and then you need a special surface with little dots on it for it to work do you have any wheel mice? this one no the before that yeah, oh the before that no these are the only two I actually always use the wheel mouse I like it so there we go we have put the wheels inside Ethernet that we think kind of works and optical mouse that kind of works. We're going to run out of software repair on that machine. Yeah, yeah.